Hi and welcome to the next module in our KX introductory workshop series and this module is going to be everything to do with functions so from creating your own and calling them um, so we've actually been using functions all day um, or all, all throughout this video series whether you've known or not those user-defined functions are all part of that keyword list um, from the, the reference card that we've been refer referring to all day so in here I've got all my keywords these are all inbuilt um, Q functions that we use um, so for example here we've got max um, 10 11 12 returns the max so that's just returning um, obviously the highest value in that list um, we've got here when it's a single so a single argument so that's also known as unary um, basically if the if we look at the reference card and we check here we can see that there's only one input x so if we're never sure how many inputs a uh, function takes we can always just come to our um, keyword and then and check what the documentation says um, but for anywhere that are single argument functions we can always just pass them as infix notation so the difference is whenever we say functional we mean within square brackets um, otherwise we don't need it um, no harm to add it um, it might just be easier um, if you're not sure or whichever you know whichever is more readable to you it's up to your preference so let's jump into defining our own functions um, so the most basic form of a function in Q would be doing something like f open bracket curly bracket and that is a legitimate function and it doesn't do anything but this here curly brackets um, are basically describing that we have a function um, so if we were to do something like do 1 plus 4 um, and define that and then run it like this so we're using function notation here we're passing no arguments which is fine um, we end up getting the result 5 so in this way um, we've just created our very first function and we could also have done something like um, you know param one so we can pass a parameters and the way we would do that would pass it between square brackets in our function and we can have up to eight um, in a function so if I run define a I can no longer do this um, it's going to give me this type error because it doesn't know what this param one is so this little carrot if you ever get an error um, spat out into your terminal and you're not sure where it's going wrong these little carrot or, or fill operators are showing where it's going wrong so this is saying f is breaking and then within f it's breaking at this plus because one of these things is wrong um, so instead of passing nothing I'm going to pass it 100 and I get 104 results uh, returned um, so great we know how to create a function now um, let's do something a little bit more complicated so Say for example we want to calculate our speed so um, miles divided by hours and return that and we want to return the kilometers per hour value rather than the miles per hour value so to do that we would use this exact same notation here so we've got our open curly bracket and our closed curly bracket then we have square brackets which are defining our parameters we need for this function um, and then we've got our function split out over multiple lines now you don't have to split this over multiple lines you can just continue writing it on the same line but I wouldn't recommend that because it's going to be pretty hard to read for other people and yourself going back to it and um, so this is a nice when you're, when you're defining it over multiple lines the only thing to remember is you need to index it um, by at least one white space character um, here um, otherwise I won't know what you mean so just remember that um, we recommend two it says here um, some people use more or less some people use tab to index in so yeah that's the preference thing um, but you must have at least one white space character here um, after the opening of the curly brackets um, and then you notice each separate line here or kind of execution uh, chunk so like this little bit is executed on its own is separated by a semicolon so this is saying it's going to do all, everything within this line finish it and then move on to the next um, line so I'm going to run this and we're going to see what's happened so I've passed 15 and 0 0.05 here and I get a result 48.27 um, we can see here what that's doing so um, if I wasn't sure what was happening I could easily just add in show before these two um, and run this thing again and I end up getting my intermediate results back so this is something very handy when you might be debugging your code and you're not quite sure what the intermediate variables are um, you can say okay well I passed in 15.05 um, that could give me an MPH of 30 that's right um, and then I've multiplied it by a factor of 1.609 just to convert it from those miles into kilometers 
and I get this 48.27 and that is the value that's returned. So I'm, I'm happy enough with that. So I'm going to take away my show. Um, and um, the, the reason why we don't get anything returned with show here is because um, with the semicolon, our output is suppressed unless we explicitly type in show like you've just seen. Um, we could also have gotten rid of both of the preceding colon and um, semicolon um, and just have KPH here instead. Um, so just because this one is a little bit more complicated and it's the first time we're seeing functions, um, let's just break this down. So we'd start with our top first. So um, let's say we're asked for a function func. So we're going to say func. We're going to open our curly brackets and we're going to throw this down on a new line um, and we're going to pass it some, um, let's just call it explicitly X and Y here. Um, we don't actually need to do this X and Y. Um, I don't know if we mentioned it above yet or not, um, but in, in Q, we don't need to explicitly state um, our parameters. Um, so if I just illustrate that with an example, if we go back to F at the beginning, I had explicitly stated param one, if I get rid of that, and I just say x plus four, that does the exact same thing. If I change that to be y, I would need, this would no longer um, return a result because I, <laughs> well, the result is returning is the function definition with the parameter because I've only passed one parameter. So I need to pass four um, separated by a semicolon. And I could also do up to z here and I could do, well, let's multiply that just so it's more clear what's going on. Um, so that's how I can use X, Y, and Z. Now, there, after you get to Z, there are no more um, uh, undeclared parameters available for you to use. So typically, you might use this where you're playing around with the function um, or you're defining a very short function um, where defining the parameters is unnecessary. It's pretty clear what it's doing. But in general, it's always a good idea to explicitly define your parameters, especially when you have more than one, because um, again, code readability, it'll be a lot easier when you're going through your lines, your function to see which is relevant to which. Um, um, but in this notation, um, because I'm using X and Y, I'm actually not going to bother because X and Y are X and Y anyway. So I'm happy with that. Um, and then on my first line, I'll just index by two spaces and I'm going to I'm going to define each bit separately so I'll say my top of my function um, and I'm going to start with the innermost so I've got x plus one and to do um, squared to two I could use my um, I could square it by itself so I could write star and x plus one here um, but also I do happen to know that we have a power of function called x um, exp which raises x to a power so my left hand will be raised to the power um and then i want the whole thing multiplied by y um, and, and i can just say y star now if i if i'm not sure and i want to have the brackets in it's not going to affect your performance again it's just um a preference whether you want to have less or more brackets so if we do our bottom then which is going to be um x plus one, first of all, so we've got x plus one, um, and then we're gonna subtract two. So we do two minus that result. Oh, sorry, it's, uh, yeah, no, it's two times, excuse me. So two times this result. And then from that, we wanna take away one. So I could do this here, minus one um, plus two. If that's confusing for you, um, you could wrap this whole thing in brackets and say minus one so it looks more like you're what you're seeing above again that is preference on your behalf um and then i'm going to say top divided by bottom and the way to negate something in q is using the neg operator um and if i say i'm gonna return this return this and um then we can see here what our result is. But the result here down below is um, showing the function definition because we're not actually passing anything into it. Um, so if we tr test this out with a little, some input, so func of three and six, we get this. And if we try three and six, 
we get the same result back. Um, you obviously have your show solution button here um, and you can see a more condensed version than the version I did. This is just doing it all in one line and it's minimizing the number of brackets. Um, so you will see some Q purists, um, especially um, you know, people with a lot of experience will always opt for this kind of version. Um, but you know, there's no performance benefit to that. Um, so if you're, if you find it more comfortable doing things like this, when you're starting off, I would definitely encourage you to do that. Um, so, um, yes, in this little section, we're just talking about explicit and implicit parameters, which I did touch on. So for speed, we had explicitly defined miles and hours. And what I was saying was there was no need to do that. We could have just had speed all in, in this short little, you know, couple of characters long function. Um, we've got our conversion, um, conversion number for the miles to kilometers. Uh, conversion and then we've got x divided by y um, and that's given us the exact same result. Um, so have a go at exercise two. Um, it's just asking you to create a function with the area rectangle so it's a lot more straightforward than this one above here um, and I shall see you in the next video.